Take number 18. <laughs> you turned off the air because it was making too much noise. Now I'm overheating. You in the hot flash? I am. Shut up. I am not 40 yet. I do not have hot flashes. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm a little cross-eyed and my eyes are tired. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number one, Broken to Beautifully Blended podcast. Got to do something about that name. It's B2, BB. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't keep track of the acronym. I can't keep track of the title either. I just call it Beautifully Blended because I'm lazy. But welcome to episode number one. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a robot, y'all, I promise. But, but yeah. it is four minutes to 11. This is probably take 18 or so. It's not take 18. How many is it? It's like four. Oh, no. Mm -mm. It's like four. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we guess we should tell you who we are. I'm Rockford. This is April, and uh, we are the Todds. Mm -hmm. We have the Todd Squad, which I'm fairly sure we were using it long before Pastor Michael Todd out of Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, Pastor, I love you, love your messages, but <laughs> we are the Todd Squad, and there's more of us than there are of you. So. <laughs> There's seven of us in total, so but I think you still have some time to catch us. Although I don't, I don't know if you will. However, <laughs> stamped it, trademarked it, <laughs> registered it. Todd Squad belongs to us. So uh, I'm Rockford again. This is April. Uh, we have five children together between us: Allison, Jaden, Reagan, Thomas, and Lauren. They are between the ages of 19 and 13, I think. Yep. Okay, good. Two more weeks and that won't be the case. Well, I guess it'll still be the case. I don't. But we'll have a birthday in two weeks. <laughs> That's true. Math escaped you for a moment there. No. Uh, it's 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I thought you were a night owl. I am until I got to do something in front of the camera. Yeah. You can do the research and that stuff, but... Hmm. Yeah, don't start getting and trying to get her to talk to people because then she clams up. I'm not clamming up. I'm letting him do the intro, letting you know that this is a podcast to encourage, engage the blended families that are out there. There's a lot of us, and we know exactly how difficult it can be to be in a blended family. We've had highs and lows and everything in between. Are you We've high? Had, no, not high. No drugs? Say no to drugs. No drugs. We've had medical crisis we've had um near divorce we've had fights we've had good times we've got a um family adventure cottage in our driveway <laughs> i mean all aspects of anything and everything blended family blended families so let's tell you about our blend allison is 19 she graduated high school a couple of years ago. She's now going to school uh, for, cos I guess it's called, she's, go she's going to cosmetology school. Right. Not going to school for cosmetology. You would think I would know that, but I don't. But <laughs> she did give me a haircut last night. I had to get all cleaned up for the new podcast. And so I figured I'd let her, you know, have some practice on me. Which is a big deal because I'm very particular about my haircuts. Mm -hmm. So, as you can tell, I have to be. It's starting to go further and further back on my head. It's fine. So, uh, after Allison is Jaden. Jaden will be 18 in a couple of weeks. Two weeks. She's a senior in high school. I think her plans are to go to Oklahoma State University mm -hmm. whenever she's done. And she wants to be a physical therapist, maybe. Although, I don't know that that's exactly what she's going to end up doing because I believe that she's still trying to figure out what God's called her to be. I think it'll be ministry. You think so? Mm-hmm. I wonder what kind of ministry. 
I don't know. She was pretty on fire last night with her Bible study here. Yeah. She does a she does a good job of encouraging her friends to spend more time in the Word. And, uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what God has for her. Uh, next is Reagan. <laughs> Reagan is the middle child. She's the girl on fire. Uh, girl on fire? Yeah. She's on fire? She's going places. Yeah. Uh... Reagan, Reagan is different than the other kids. I think some of that's because she's the middle child, but she, uh, I think she wants to be an architect mm -hmm. when she grows up, which is getting here all too rapidly. Uh, she seems to think she wants to be a big city girl, wants to live, you know, like in New York City or someplace like that, and I tried to encourage her that you're not <laughs> real sure what that's going to be like. So maybe a trip to New York City will be in our future at some point to say, hey, is this really what you want to do? Maybe on the way to Youth X in July. I don't, I don't know about that, but South Carolina and New York City, that's not exactly a straight line. So we'll see what happens with that. Maybe. Maybe. It's one of those blended family discussions is coming up, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, after Reagan is Thomas... Thomas is the only boy besides me in the house, and he is 14, mm -hmm. and he has his work cut out for him with all these girls. Did you mention really quick that Reagan was 16? I know you said she was the middle kid. I don't, I don't know. She's 16. Mm -hmm. She's got her driver's license, but she doesn't have a car yet. She has to share with Jaden. Oh, the hardship. So, you can understand how that might go with two girls that are in their teenage years. We'll see. Maybe she'd get a car soon. Uh, anyway, Thomas, 14, only boy. Uh, really sort of coming into his own right now. Uh, this year he started taking ag classes at school. And part of that, he's showing a pig. Uh, Skitsy the pig. Skitsy the pig. Mom and Thomas have done the bulk of the work with this deal. Uh, <laughs> they get up in the mornings, they go over and feed the pig. They go over in the afternoons and feed the pig. And Thomas cleans out the pen because, as I'm sure you're aware, pigs are a mess. And so uh, he's really done well. A little funny side note from today's adventure at the farm. Skitsy was upset and she started kicking up her wood chips and then Thomas started gagging. I said, what are you doing? Skitsy had kicked nasty wood chips up into his mouth. And so he was <laughs> even over the side of the pit. It was awesome. So tip for Thomas and anybody else that might be watching, if you're going to be working around a pig, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> mm. We give sound advice on this podcast. So... Uh, and then last but not least is Lauren. Lauren is 13, and Lauren has a bit of a mind of her own. Uh, she's She is, I don't know, she's a lot like her dad. So, as you might be able to tell, we can be a bit sarcastic at times, and so that can be a bit much to handle, um, for her and for us as parents, uh, there's times that you'd really would like to strangle her, but other times you see the real genuine love that she has for others. And so um, all of these kids are very different and it's been a unique situation for us to figure out how to make it all work together. Uh, just in, an, in another note about how it all works out, the breakdown is the three blonde girls, Jaden, Reagan, and Lauren, came with me, and Allison and Thomas both came with April. And so we have uh, five children all together. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's not all that lives here, right? Mm -hmm. We have animals, too. Who do we have? We have Pepper, who is... A nine, he wants me to say this because he would be sarcastic. It's a nine-year-old shiatsu. How do you say it? I say it different than that. <laughs> yes, you do. And we have Sadie, who is at my feet right now, and I'm surprised she didn't jump up whenever she heard my 
let me say her name, but she is a two-year-old chocolate lab. She is 80 pounds, and whenever she is up and not laying at my feet, she would be able to be seeing her little eyeballs here. So I'm sure you'll be seeing them as well. Yeah, she won't stay still for long. Mm -mm. However, uh, that's us. That's us in a nutshell. We are... Well, that's not really us. We didn't talk about who we are. So you... Who am I? You're Rockford. Tell me a little bit about your family growing up. Uh, my family's pretty nuts. Uh, That's not what I mean. Oh. Everybody's family's pretty nuts. Oh, okay. I get it. You want me to be uh, real? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> growing up... Uh, I would have I had what you would call a pretty normal childhood. My folks uh, were together until I was 21. They finally got divorced at that time after like 36 years of marriage. It's crazy. Um, but looking back over my life as a child, I mean they they were a normal couple. We did normal things. My, I have an older sister who is eight years older than me. And so once she left the house, when uh, I guess she graduated high school in 1985, I was sort of like an only child for a long time. Um, and so, you know, one thing that I think was a little bit different and might have sort have felt different at the time, my dad took an early retirement uh, in 1989. And so we... Uh, we actually didn't all live together for most of my high school career. We went to California for a while, a while where my mom is from, uh, and that really didn't work out for our family, so we came back, and you know, my dad decided that he was not quite done teaching, so he took a job in Las Vegas for a year. Uh, my mom and I stayed here in Oklahoma. He went to Las Vegas. I uh, did that for one year. He came back for a year when I was a junior, and did some, some work around here. And then as when I was a senior in high school, he took a job in Arkansas. And so it was me and my mom for the most part uh, throughout my high school career. And then uh, after I got to college, like I said, I, was, I think it was 21, they divorced. Uh, my dad has since, excuse me, I have an itchy schnoz. Uh, my dad has remarried. Uh, he had married a wonderful woman named Anne, and Anne has become uh, a second mother to me and to my sister, and I think to April and everybody mm -hmm. in our family. And it's really, it's quite interesting how close Anne and my mother actually are. I would call them friends. Uh, I think they have learned to get along, and they actually depend on one another's company and, and advice and input. And so we have, over the years, developed uh, a really a close family, even though my parents uh, have split. So, um, all in all, I would say that we have adjusted to life of divorce uh, from, from my generation, mine and my sister's. Um, we all do family gatherings together, Christmas Thanksgiving, you know, whenever there's a, a special day, birthdays and stuff, we get together. We do it all as one family. We don't go celebrate with dad and, and his wife and mom. We, you know, we just, we do it all together. Why is that? Uh, I don't, you know, you think looking back, um, when, when my folks first got divorced, now we did spend a couple of years doing them separate. Um, uh, and my sister and I were like, this is not going to work. Uh, we're not going to be traipsing kids all over the country uh, just because you guys didn't want to stay married. And so mm -hmm. we sort of forced them into it. And the first few were a little awkward. Uh, but after that, it got much, much easier, much, much better. And now today, I would say that as far as family gatherings are concerned, we have a pretty normal family. Um, at least it seems normal to us. It may not be to anybody else. And I, I can certainly understand that there are people out there that, you know, their, their uh, reality is different than that. 
and uh, you know we we have experienced that some even in this uh, family unit as well. Uh, I can say that I don't I don't think that we're going to be getting together with exes anytime soon to celebrate the holidays. But there are times that we do get together uh, for the sake of the kids, and so well, there's been times like Allison's prom and her graduation that we came together and. Her dad was here and was able to share in that day, and he came in and participated. But mm. I think it really it changes once there's grandkids. Um, so I came from a family that I have two older brothers. One is 19 months older, one's 34 months older. And my parents split whenever I was five. And then my mom was um, not in the picture for a while, and she came back and Sadie is groaning about that she came back and um now we have a very similar situation to rockford's family my mom and my stepfather they um usually host any event that is coming except for fourth of july my sister-in-law does that um, and my dad attends as well and everybody is together and it was very difficult as i was growing up because there was a lot of hurt feelings just in my parents and then whenever I actually gave birth to Allison, that was the first time that you could see that that reconciliation in their their relationship because my dad made the the um, statement that they were going to be in each other's lives forever. It wasn't just until I was 18. And so they have since Allison was born, which this was our 20th Christmas. And um, we've done Christmas together, Thanksgiving together, 4th of July. Everybody has been together. That being said, I also have one sister from each of my parents. I have one from my dad, one from my mom. And then my stepfather has a son and a daughter that the son's older than me, daughter's younger. So I'm the middle, technically, of seven. I'm also the oldest girl. I'm also the youngest of my natural family. So I got a whole bunch of different things that go on with me whenever... We have little spats here with our kids because like Rockford said earlier, he was pretty much an only child. And so whenever our kids start to fight, he'll go, I don't know if that's normal. And I can tell him from just being a sibling unit and then having steps and then having half siblings that are blended in that it's normal. It is, especially whenever they're that close in age, there is going to be friction. Just have to make sure nobody dies. Close in age and probably looking to establish who's the favorite. Uh, that comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. So I say it all the time. Thomas is my favorite boy. Allison's my favorite brown-headed girl. Jaden is my favorite senior. They're all my favorite at something. That usually doesn't go over as well as she thinks it does, but... <laughs> I don't have to actually answer the question. In a court of law, that would probably play out the way that she thinks so. <laughs> I think if, if April was going to be anything in this world that she's not today, she would be a lawyer. Oh, yeah. That's what I wanted to be when I was growing up. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, that's sort of where we come from. Um, this being episode number one, it's also January of 2019, the beginning of a new year. Uh, coming out of 2018, uh, 2018 was a very interesting year for us as a family. You know, uh, we went through a period about four years ago where we we pretty much had decided we were getting divorced. And then uh, we, or let me rephrase, I had decided we were getting divorced. And uh, the Lord really changed our hearts uh, and helped us to see him differently, which forced us to see each other differently. And really, really changed the trajectory of our lives. Um, and we'll get into a whole lot more of that in the coming weeks and months about what we've been through in that situation. However, uh, things were going really well, chugging along. And then mm -hmm. we got into 2018 and we had quite a year. Uh, in 2018, we um, changed jobs. Uh, I, had, I had the opportunity to uh, change full-time job. Uh, I had been working for Oklahoma State for 11 years and 
really felt like the Lord was calling me to do something different, to step out of my comfort zone a bit. And I sort of battled back and forth with that decision for about four or five months. Uh, and then on June, June 1, started a new job. Mm -hmm. uh, we did solo business. Uh, we really believed uh, a couple of years ago that we needed to get or were being called to get uh, a, a fifth wheel so that we could spend time with our kids out doing something other than just being on technology mm -hmm. and driving down a four-lane highway and eating at McDonald's. I mean, that was that was sort of what our kids thought America was. And so we said, well, that's not really what it is. And so uh, once we started down that path, we went to several RV shows. And we actually bought uh, the truck that we have mm -hmm. to pull a fifth wheel and somehow ended up in the snow cone business with a snow cone trailer <laughs> and concession trailer. Anyway, it was quite a detour, but we did sell that business in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the fifth wheel in 2018, planned a big summer vacation. We took the thing to the East Coast, um, took the family whitewater rafting in Tennessee. It was an amazing trip. Yeah. Um, and I think it was pretty pretty life changing for for the kids and pretty eye opening for us. Um, got home and April lost her job, and a couple of the kids felt like they really needed to do some rebelling. And with the change in my job, it really wasn't quite what I was hoping it was going to be. Whenever it changed in the end, the last half of 2018 was really trying for our family in a lot of ways. Um, and it really put some pressure on us as a, as a married couple. It put pressure on us as parents. Uh, I think it really might have even put some pressure on the kids as to whether, are, are we really a tight family unit or are we just people that exist here together? So um, luckily enough, it appears that things are sort of coming around full circle. Uh, not losing faith in what God's called us to do or what God's called us to be uh, has led to this. It has given April opportunity to uh, continue doing what she enjoys doing in real estate. Uh, my job is, is coming around. It is actually uh, becoming a lot more comfortable, a lot more um, of what I would expect it to be. And so, you know, God is good. He is continuing to develop our faith, develop our trust. And so, you know, as a family, we're expecting big things in 2019. And I can say, as you begin to know us a little bit better, you'll understand the differences between Rockford and my personality. I am an entrepreneur. I have a much higher... Um, optimism level than Rockford can see, see optimism can seem to Risk. have and it is I want to be very clear I did not lose my job I was released it was one thing that we were praying about and God released me from that and it is because he does have bigger and better things for this and then also for some entrepreneurship coaching opportunities that I have coming up in 2019. And I just want to make a note, Rockford's Trucks name is Haas and we have adventuring. We have a page that we put out. The kids do vlogs for our friends and it is called the Todd Squad, again, Todd Squad, adventuring in the Haas Drawn Cottage. We have something for long titles. We do. We know nobody's going to go in and mistakenly find us. In the world of marketing online, that's probably <laughs> not the best thing. Well, so. we can use tags. That's true. That's true. Um, anyway, we hope that you will take the time to invest in seeing what's coming up on the podcast. We will do our best to be entertaining and to be informative. Um, as, as we get into this and we get more into the story of who we are and what God's called us to, 
Um, I think that you will find encouragement for your situation, for your family. Uh, blended families are not easy. Uh, marriage in general is not easy. But at least if you're getting married uh, in a quote-unquote normal situation, you have time to develop mm -hmm. your marriage, just the two of you. Uh, but when you do it as a blended family, uh, it's sort of the term, what is it, instant family? I see you, you say I do, and then it's, hey, let's shove all of you into a house and see what happens. <laughs> and it can be a bit of a, it can be a bit of a tumbler. Well, and you know, we've, we, we do a lot of, um, learning as a couple, um, Rockford learns some things, I learn other things, and we together four years ago started working on this relationship and one of the things that we have seen out there for blended families is they call it a slow cooker but that has not been our experience it was more of an instapot pressure cooker and so you have to either know how to use the pressure cooker to get something delicious or it's going to blow up yeah um so anyway over the over the coming weeks and months we want you to to come along with us uh, we have opportunities for you to invest in your marriage and in your family uh, outside of this. Uh, and just to be clear, if I should, probably should have said this up front, we are not licensed therapists in any way. We are not here to give you medication. We aren't here to prescribe anything. We are here to encourage you. Uh, if you have need for a licensed therapist, I think we can probably point you in the right direction, but we are not therapists, so. We are an entrepreneur and an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and a pretty salty one at that. Which one, entrepreneur or engineer? I don't know, you'll have to figure it out. <laughs> well, and it's, we are here to be very authentic. It's what we feel like God has called us to do to shed some light on this subject because there is such a large, um, I don't know, what is it? Demographic void. void. There's such a large um, need for it. Whenever we started looking, there really wasn't anything for us to get straight to what it was that we needed. And so that's what we're here to do. Blended families are f hard, they're fun, they're frightening, <laughs> they are uh, worth it in the mm -hmm. end. Um, I think that what you will find as you know us, as you know our kids, is that they know that they are secure with the two of us. Um, whether they all admit it or not, they see us as their parents it's not your dad and my mom or vice versa it is these are my folks they've asked us to do this we're gonna do this we're gonna fight for our, each other we're gonna fight for our family we're going to uh, make the best out of what we've been handed and your family can too but it does take time and it takes effort so uh, again we want you to come along with us. We want you to be a part. And we look forward to what God's going to do through this uh, medium for families that are, are looking to um, strengthen their bond. So how can they see the rest of them? I don't know. There's a subscribe button somewhere. Somewhere. We don't know where. Well, it's different on every mm -hmm. device. So, you know. I, I feel like I should have probably practiced that part of this because, you know, when you listen to polished podcasts, they know exactly where to point on the screen and tell you where to go <laughs> up, down, left, right. Anyway. I bet not on episode one. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Some people are professionals. We are not. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on Broken to Beautifully Blended. Bye.